The Sporland Division of Parker Hannifin Corporation is sponsoring this podcast. Sporland is the leading manufacturer of HVAC and R components. Using quality materials and craftsmanship, Sporland maintains a commitment to innovation, manufacturing excellence, service, and support for its customers since 1934. The company is known for its catch-all filter dryers, thermostatic expansion valves, solenoid valves, pressure regulating valves, suction filters, electric valves, controllers, supermarket monitoring solutions, chemicals, smart service tools, ZoomLock Max Press to Connect, and ZoomLock Push, Push to Connect Refrigerant Fittings. If folks want to learn more, what do they do? Uh, you can go to sporland.com. I guess that's Jim and John for Sporland signing off. We've all been there in the middle of a job, everything going smoothly until boom, you're missing a part. United Refrigeration is your one-stop shop for all your refrigeration needs. Use your computer or smartphone to go to www.uri.com at any time of the day or night to check stock on your favorite brands, such as Copeland, Sporlin, Carlisle Compressors, Danfoss, Emerson CPC Boards and Sensors, Corel, Hussman Parts, and k therm United Refrigeration Inc. is home to these brands and many more. Looking for information on refrigerant conversions or refrigerant banking? Quick access links on the homepage can get you to the information you need. All approved accounts are able to see live to the minute inventory and pricing. Product not in stock at your local branch? No problem. Use the nearby stock feature to find a local branch that does have what you need. Are you looking for a branch address, phone number, or after hours number? That's all available as well. Just click on the branch locator and search for your local branch. Have a model number and looking for a replacement part? www.uri.com forward slash ARP has a vast list of quick pick replacement parts. Just search for the model number of the equipment you're working on and click the replacement parts tab. If you don't have an account, click the register button and we'll have you online in no time. With more than 400 locations in North America, each United Refrigeration branch is fully stocked for immediate pickup. Our branch employees have in-depth technical knowledge so we can help you get what you need when you need it. Visit your local store or www.uri.com forward slash ARP today. United Refrigeration Inc. has all your solutions down cold. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Advanced Refrigeration Podcast. You're here with your hosts, Brett Wetzel and Kevin Compass. Where you at this week, man? I haven't talked to you. You've been, you've been rather busy. I've just been running service calls. Yeah. So just running around doing service calls. Sweet. I'm down in Houston. I got out of the I got out of the house for a little bit. So yeah, fun times. Fun times. So I guess we'll get right into it unless you got something something you want to talk about that you, you had going on this week. Mm. Anything, anything real crazy? No, this week's been pretty uneventful. I don't know. You sounded well, angry this morning. Oh, I was. Eh, well, I've been on callback duty, so. Sweet. What Every, all your all your callbacks? No, uh, no, I get call forwards. They're not called. They're learning experiences. Yeah. Uh, so, usually when I get a callback, it's either something retarded, like I left the hand valve off or a switch off, <laughs> or it's something that's going to cost like twenty or thirty thousand dollars. I've I've had that happen. I don't know, once or twice, but like remembering probably after I drove away for like an hour, um, you know, I, I was trying to prove that, you know, I was a little bit low on charge. So I was shutting down circuits and basically I was like, all right, that's what it is. You know, I just need to get some gas in it, but they didn't want to, they didn't want to finish it for the night. So I was like, oh, I'll just come back in the morning and I'm driving away and I'm like, I don't know, probably halfway home. And all of a sudden I'm like, shit. And then realized that I had to motor it back before shit started going into alarm. I'm really bad about leaving switches off, so I can't say anything. So, gotten had, a little bit better about it. We, we had a, I, left, I left an entire rack off one time. 
<laughs> right, it we was had, off like six and a half hours for anybody even noticed. Oh my God. We, we had a kid that like started digging like a backpack type. Uh, I don't know if it was a new veto bag, you know, the backpack or whatever, but all I know is, you know, periodically after he would leave a service call, like there would be odd circuits off. He's like, I didn't shut off anything. And you know, what he was doing is he was doing his last checks on the, on the controller and then would spin around to, to check something else. And then when he would spin the, that big ass backpack would end up turning off like four or five rogue circuits. Yeah. That sucks. Yes. That, that, that would really suck. ass. Well, tonight guys, I want to go into something that like a lot of new guys struggle with and a lot of old guys, to be honest too. Um, we're we're going to go into like how to actually look things up. Like the set may sound stupid and trivial, but a lot of guys actually struggle with this, and there's there's an art to this. Like no, no, we're talking look things up. We're talking like IOM manuals, uh, equipment manuals. Um, if you're Brett Legends, because that's all he talks about. <laughs> um, I can't help if that's the, you know that helps me diagnose shit because our legends show you everything that you would you know right. need to know. I'm not right, man. Um, definitely, definitely legend. God, you made me say um like seven times now. Ha! I didn't make Stop. you do anything. I'm the one who edits. I know how many times you say um. So, all right, guys, we're going to go over this before Brett keeps interrupting everybody. Um, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Google search and things, guys. So this sounds really stupid, but it, it, there's there's kind of an art behind it. So like when you're looking up manuals, for example, like I get calls all the time with guys asking for your know, case information. Nothing irritates me more than getting a call asking about how a case should be like set up or like running like and they haven't looked at the manual. All right. Like, hold, hold on. Hold on. Before you continue, I, I don't know if you can say that anymore. I don't know if you can say nothing irritates me more except for that, because I guarantee like you've said that a million times about other things. Well, yeah, like you interrupting me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Continue. Sorry. The way that uh, you go about this, a lot of times at Google, less is more. Meaning, like, if you're trying to type a whole mile number to Google, you're probably not going to get the search you want. Meaning, like, if you type in, like, a D5 xle-12 un it's probably going to come up with a bunch of random bullshit and a bunch of like shit for sale on ebay because that's what happens every time shorten it up so when you're like doing it it'll be like d5 xle and then leave off like the space where where it has the length and after the length and then after that it'll usually pull up you know the husband manual so same thing if you're doing a hill stuff. So less is more, meaning don't type in the entire model number. You know, get get like half of it. Okay, once you type in that half of that model number, now you, it's going to search everything that that's involved in. If you put too much in there, it messes with Google's algorithm, and it ends up like trying to be too specific, and then you end up missing all these manuals. So that that's the way I do it. Now, if you're looking up like specific things, like, for example, like if you're trying to find, you know, some old stuff. OK, well, a lot of old stuff's harder to find. Now, what I'll generally do is like, so if I'm looking for this obscure manual, uh, I will usually type in like, so say if I'm looking for some like roof, random rooftop manual and I can't find it. So what I'll do is I'll type in like HVAC talk at the end of it. And from that old forum that used to be around, there is hundreds of thousands of archived like things, conversations in in there. Like, I don't know how many things I found on like com stuff and like looking at like random problems or, you know, problems with like uh, stuff I couldn't find online, like specific things. If you type in like HVAC talk at the end of it. So like if you're looking for like, so a Tyler rack manual, you type in Tyler rack and in this type HVAC talk, you may get a hundred things. If you, you get a little more specific type a little bit more, you know, maybe a model number or like Tyler screw rack and then hit the HVAC talk on there. And 
you'll find those inside those you'll find tons of archive conversations you may have to dig a little bit through the conversations but generally you could find like old information that you wanted to find on there like old comtrol manuals and stuff like that so using that like portion of google is a huge help for when you're trying to find older stuff like using that hvac talk or uh, i try to stay off that manuals.com so like a lot of times like, you'll be searching things and like it'll come up on that manuals.com it's a real nightmare to like search stuff on there so i try to stay off that i mean sometimes you can't like not find it on there and you got to kind of like you know dig through it but with google for example like you said the less you put in there the, the more you're going to find since brett's making faces and being a complete jackass right now <laughs> so you, you guys- I- I, yeah, yeah I, I didn't want to interrupt you, you know, because I, I didn't want you to lose your panties. But um, so, yeah, he's absolutely right. You know, less information is more. Um, if you're looking for a 05 DM uh, NRG-12, leave out the NRG, leave out the footage of the case or leave out the amount of doors. Like if you're looking for a Hussman case, you know, an RL6 or an RL5, just leave the six or the five out, you know, because, you know, the number is just dictating whether it's the footage of the case or the amount of doors. And because those things vary so much, you're less likely to actually find that when you add the, um, you know, the footage of the doors on there. So he's absolutely correct. Less information is more same thing um, that goes for those um, Barker cases, you know, where they have the serial number that's, you know, basically has the model number in it. Um, you have to be very, very specific. There's usually like three or four letters that you would like Google in that serial number to try to figure out what the hell you're looking for. The other thing is it starts at the end where like the, the, on the Barker ones, it starts at the end where like the model number starts with a number, a letter, Like the first letter of that is usually the model number. Why are you looking at me like I'm retarded? No, I'm just listening to you. Oh, uh, the first letter is of the Barker case serial numbers is is the is is the the model number. So like if it's like a one zero 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 five five, you know, it's got thirty five things in it. You know, so you have to write that down every work order. Want to hang yourself, and then it'll be like S A. F A T. Well, that, that's that case. It's an S F A T or whatever it is. So that that's how you look it up. Hills manuals are actually pretty good. Like uh, their 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 manual search on on their website is actually halfway decent. So I mean, you could you could usually find the stuff. It's just like thumbing through trying to find the correct uh, case document because there's like installation, there's uh, IOMs, there's all kinds of random stuff. So, like, you just got to find the correct one on their website. I agree. Uh, you know, sometimes if you can't find the IOM manuals, you know, this is when you try to get, you know, a rep that you talk to, that you end up talking to, that you end up being friendly with, just, you know, so he answers the phone for you. Um, you know, there's a bunch of people out there that, you know, I, I keep their contacts close and I'll reach out to them first. And it's like, hey, I got a friend of mine that's, you know, looking for this issue, you know, looking for this manual or whatever. And, you know, sometimes they'll send it to me. Sometimes they'll send it directly. But, you know, don't abuse those contacts. Um, you know, the other day someone was um, asking for someone's number at Danfoss and someone put up someone who's you know really good over at Danfoss. They put their cell phone up there and I ended up taking it down because that's, I mean, that's disrespectful. You don't, you know, post someone's, you know, cell phone number on, on a public forum. Cause I mean, I, I don't know, you know, you private message the guy. Yeah, fine. But you know, respect their privacy, right? Don't, don't do that shit. So I'm going to put Brett's personal cell phone number all over. Uh... Oh, did it freeze there it goes no it was just me not moving no like it, it, no it froze legitimately um okay so like i'm back onto the search stuff guys so 
now like let's go into searching manuals because i guys like this is where guys get bogged down especially new guys okay say you got a manual and say it's for like a vfd that manual may be 400 pages long okay but you're looking for a specific alarm or a specific thing so like in adobe like i generally use everything in adobe i i have an android phone so everything i open is in adobe so for documents now Adobe's great for the, the this one feature and that's the search feature so in the drop down thing of Adobe when you open the document you have the search feature so less is more type in as vague as possible so like if I'm working on this VFD and it's got a B32 alarm okay so I'm going to type in there uh B32 and then I'll try if it brings up like, you know, 10 pages, I'll type in B32 alarm. And that'll generally take me to right what I'm looking for. Like with all these manuals that have like huge, ridiculous, long pages, using that search feature is key. Like the SC3 manual, for example, there is like, what is that being like 250 pages? And there's like 45 different examples on how to wire this thing up. So if I'm looking for the one I want, like all I do is type it in there and I search it and it's like, okay, SC in the SC three manual, I'll look up like a single standalone unit, uh, no EVs. Like I'll, I'll just put in single standalone unit. It'll bring up all the pages where it says single standalone unit. Okay. Well, maybe you need to get a little more specific now. And you can see these page numbers. You could jump from page to page to whatever you got to search in there. So using that, that search feature inside the manual itself is, is key. Like, I'm not sitting there thumbing through, you know, 200 pages of manual. I mean, there is times where I have to do that where it really sucks and you're, like, irritated. But, like, most of the time, I'm just using the search feature, and I'm just boom, 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 find it real quick. Like, I download the manual. I open it in Adobe. I search it real quick. Okay, I, okay, it's on page number 132 is what I'm looking for. So open up, boom, 132. There's my information. Like, half the time when guys ask you questions, I mean – I'm really good at Googling things. I'm not, I mean, I'm not super smart. Like I'm just good at looking up information. Like we have all this information in our hands. Like try Googling it before you call somebody and ask how a case is supposed to be set up or like how this is supposed to be set up. Like if you don't know what you're working uh, on, what you're working on is how it's supposed to work. You're never going to, uh, you're never going to be able to fix it. So, I mean, that's why looking up the case manual is imperative before you do anything. But all that information's out there. Like, I mean, some of the older Tyler stuff, you're going to get kind of screwed on. I mean, whatever Hill has, they have a lot of it, but they started cutting it off, I noticed. Maybe because the case are getting older. I don't know. Um, uh, if you ha- if anyone's had the privilege to talk to Harry Moy from Hill Phoenix, uh, that man is utterly freaking amazing. Like, as far as he's going to, he's be, he's bluntly honest with you. You know, um, you know, that's what I found out when I started talking to him about the, the shelving that, you know, is put in, you know, a lot of these different stores with the pushers and he'll go straight, you know, tell me straight up that, you know, Brett, I can't do anything for you. I'm like, well, why not? He's like, well, those, those shelves are not made for the manufacturer. So, um, you're just going to have to, you're going to have to deal with it. Um, if anyone for any, one out there what happens is with those particular type of shelving there's like a metal racking that's that connects to the back of the case and then the pushers attached to that that little hanging piece um the problem is is that there's no all the air just coming out the back wall directly goes straight down because there's no way to channel it across those pushers because you already have a two inch gap on there so what happens is the product temperature stays high as hell you know 40 45 degrees and then you'll have, you know, the, the product on the bottom pan will be sitting at like whatever the discharge air is because all that air is basically coming out the back wall and then basically getting sucked right over that product that's sitting in the bottom shelf. Next time you're at a store, right, and you see those uh, those pushers, feel in between the product and then go to a case that's right next to it that actually has shelves with the pushers on top of the shelves. I'm fine with that. Because at least the, the air is getting diverted, you know, out of the back wall and across the shelf that, that the way it's supposed to. You know, that's the whole reason why we typically on the um, the pegs, why we put a piece of plexiglass on the top there to make sure the air comes across and goes across any product that we'd have there. 
but that's an ongoing thing. I, I, I don't understand why, why they make them if, if, you know, a lot of manufacturers are like, well, those aren't our shelves. So, you know, it's not going to work right. Well, there's so many different stores that use those particular ones. I think almost every single one that I've seen, you know, they use one version of that. How about you? I mean, yeah, they're all over the place. So back, back to looking things back up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like Brett said, like, you know, actually calling tech support. I mean, tech support should be your last option. I mean, you should try to look all this up on your own to try to find it before you tie up tech support because, I mean, the wait times are already long enough as it is. So, I mean, finding it on Google is going to be your best bet first and then using the actual, you know, search at hand. Now, like when I do this, for example, when I look up a manual that I don't have, like, so I put everything in Dropbox. I have my own personal Dropbox. It's got hundreds of thousands of files in it. So when I look up a manual, I download a manual and I say, you know, downloads my phone. I save it in Dropbox. I mean, Dropbox is free for your first two gigs, like whatever you use. Now, what I'll do is I'll save it in Dropbox and put it in a folder. Dropbox is a thousand times easier to search for things on than Google. So like if I go into my Dropbox and I want to look up a 05 DM case, boom, type in 05 DM. I may have like 15 different things it hits, but it's going to hit everything with 05 DM in it. Like I may have like a customer specific tab. It'll actually search documents for that actual like uh, that name. So like it, even if the document isn't called 05 DM, if 05 DM is in the document, it'll bring up that in the search. So that's why Dropbox is awesome because it'll it's an even more powerful search engine for you. And then that manual's there. So you don't got to go through and re-download it off Hill Phoenix's website or Husband's website or try to go through that. It's already in the Dropbox, you know, and then you could, you know, customize it. Go ahead, Brett. So that, that that's what I was going to say. So a lot of times these documents are not labeled as, you know, the model number of that case. You know, a lot of times the document will be, you know, let's just say you're looking for, I'll go back to the 05 DM NRG. Like, it, you know, if you're looking for that, that document might, might be listed as 138477856739. You know, it won't be exactly that. So being able to use, utilize Dropbox for that, because it actually, like you said, it searches the actual document. Um, I had created a, a website for, for Coolsys, um, where basically I put all the information that I own on this, on this server. And it, it utilizes SharePoint, and it's amazing because it, it basically does the same thing as Dropbox. So you can type in Walmart Danfoss, and any document that has those two words in it, it's going to find. So See, I it, absolutely hate SharePoint. Like, I think SharePoint's, like, buggy and, like, laggy compared to Dropbox. Like, we use, we use SharePoint, and I, I, I literally I refuse to use it. Like, I, I, can't, I can't stand it. Well, I, and I agree with you, but typically it's because, you know, if you're using SharePoint through the company, right, yeah. it, it has, you're, you know, you're searching, right, but you're not searching straight to the internet, you're going through a server on a server on a server, and that's, that's typically why it's so damn laggy, right? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, problem with drop, the problem with Dropbox is, like, so, like, there's, like, seven people on my Dropbox, so, like, my guys are on my Dropbox, but, like, I'm, I... Like technically it's for one person. I, I pay for my Dropbox. Like it's $115 because I have a I have a bigger one. But the the issue is is multiple people can add and delete to that. So that's where it starts getting like convoluted and like you know, if you're just adding a ton of files and not filing them away, that's where it gets kind of like messed up. Like client pros used to have a company Dropbox and it was awesome until people started adding like picture they, they wouldn't turn their photos off and like next thing you know it's uploading photos and you know some people don't want those photos uploaded ah. we used to just sit there and go through photos you know every once in a while you'd see something you you you, you probably should have seen but that, uh that's kind of horrible yeah i mean but i mean i like dropbox i think dropbox is an excellent search tool like so like if i typed in right now if i typed in costco okay it's going to bring up every single file that I have labeled in my phone for Costco. And if I type in Costco like 634, it's going to bring up everything I have saved for Costco 634 in our report 
uh, case specs, uh, all that stuff. So all that'll be in there. Like when I do a new store, like when I do the startup, I'll generally like figure out what cases are there. I'll put those case manuals in a, in a uh, file, like, and I'll name it. Like, so if I'm doing like Costco number 102, okay, I'm starting up Costco 102. I'll put all the information in there that the rack specs, the rack, rack information, uh, models, of cereals of the rack, like all the like stuff that I'm going to need and the other people are going to need. So that way it's there. So if I ever need to search it, boom, I hit it right there. Like pictures, like, so if I'm on my phone and I'm, you know, doing a, the report pictures, I could save those pictures in the Dropbox. So all that's in there and you can file it away. So then like when you're searching stuff, like for manuals and stuff that you use all the time, like you could easily look it up on Dropbox. You know, it's a lot faster than Google. Like, do I do it every time? No, I get lazy at times. And I'm just like, you know what, I'll just go to Google. and I, I forget to save that manual. But stuff I'm using all the time, that way I'm not downloading it like nonstop and uh, downloading it nonstop. And uh, what are you doing? I'm just listening. Like, <laughs> so, so we're not downloading it nonstop. I mean. That that's where it gets kind of a, like a pain, like looking up manuals, like just constantly downloading the same thing over and over again. Like obviously after a while, you know, like and now like for parts, okay. So Husman has like that that online parts thing. So it's Husman e parts. So you go there, you type in your serial number, it'll bring up every single part of that that case. So like you could type in there the case serial number. You type it in there. You could you could dial the search on a little bit more. You could find the exact part number for every every piece in that case. So you go on there. You say you need this bumper. Okay, you find the bumper part number and it's right there. Or like you need this fan blade part number. Like this, it, it goes down even to the electrical connectors in the case. Every single piece that went into building that case is on that website. So that Husman E Parts, like it's great. Like it's a great tool, like to find part numbers and stuff. So like you could find all that stuff on there. So if anyone has an iPhone, um, you know, cause I have an iPhone for work and then I have an Android for, for my personal, but on the, um, on the iPhone that, you know, they have this uh, thing called books and a lot of times I'll save whatever document into that, you know, if it's something that I use frequently. So I don't know, uh, sizing expansion valves. Uh, you know, I use the Sporlin 1010 document or, you know, the, the solenoids or, you know, whatever I use really, really frequently. Um, anything with the Danfoss uh, VFDs that they're typically putting on the, the Walmarts, you know, all the programming for that. Just something that I get asked for a lot. You know, I just happen to save all that shit on the, uh, on the, on the books app on the iPhone. Yeah, Hill Phoenix actually has a uh, a case parts and I think the manuals are on there too. App for Apple, like it's uh, it's Hill Phoenix like cases. I think on and the Apple app. I have it on my iPad. I don't use it a whole lot, but like there's like obscure parts. Like when you're looking up, like say you need a defrost heater part number or a fan blade part number. It, go ahead. So I, I did want to bring this up. So uh, United is in the process of uh, being able to. They're gonna they're gonna have a whole bunch of different documents for rooftop units, condensing units, and and stuff like that. And eventually, what what you're gonna be able to do is find the part um, that you're looking for through these you know through these guides, and then basically do a search to find out where you know where in the United States they actually have it. Yes, yeah, that's nice. And then the Copeland app, like I was just using this, using this today. It, it's buggy at times. Don't get me wrong. It can have its issues. Like they seem to kind of be like working it out. But the Copeland app for like compressor parts and information, COP charts, like amperage charts, uh, part numbers. So like today I was trying to find gasket part numbers for a modulo compressor, which is almost impossible to look up online. You either, you either have to call your your supply house and wait for them to probably give you the wrong parts because for some reason the modulo is like taboo and like it's it's impossible to find parts for it so on the copeland app okay i scan the compressor pulls up a serial number it's a modulo compressor 
Okay, I'm digging through gaskets. I can type in moduloed in the search thing under the parts. Boom, it pulls up all the things that are under the moduloed, okay? I find it, I need this gasket. I need the unloader. I need the uh, coil. You know, it's all in there. You could dig through, okay? There's a kit for it. You know, you can go through and it give you the part number and then you can call the supplier and you have a better chance of getting the right parts, you know, using that search feature in there in that Copeland app. It's a great tool, like to look up like Copeland parts. Yeah, sometimes some of the wording sucks and you got to type the part number in the uh, into Google and just, just figure out what it comes up on like United's website or something else to see what like if it's the right voltage or like if it has everything in the kit. But I mean, for the most part, it'll it'll get you close. And here's the other great thing about it. So, like, say you're looking at that, that part up in there, you could search that at any wholesale house, like, in your area. It'll tell you, it, it's pretty accurate. It screwed me a couple times, but it's pretty accurate on uh, on quantities. So, like, we were looking for a Y1030, or not a Y, a DTC valve, okay? Um, United was, they had one, in like, the distribution center in, like, some random state, I don't remember. It, these are on back order. Well, I'm looking and we're looking for this DTC valve and I type the part number in there. I get the, the Copeland part number. I type it in the app and it pops up. I'm looking, I'm like, Holy cow. There's 53 at a supply house by us. Like that we use up here all the time. Well, everybody else was back ordered. Well, there's 53 of them for some God awful reason sitting there. Well, turns out they actually had them. So, I mean, using that, I mean, they were scrambling, looking like multi-states, you know, looking for this D DTC valve. And as soon as I popped it up in the app, there was like five people looking for this thing. I found it in like 10 seconds. So I have a question for you. Um, you know, a lot of times nowadays, I mean, the, you know, the the guys, the, you know, the old school as or what Kevin would refer to the boomers, you know, they could find parts based off of a description. They could actually give you a part number and they could give you options. I mean, there was a, there was a cat that I used to deal with up in, up in uh, Connecticut, uh, Scotty, man, like he, you know, you'd tell him, Hey man, I'm working on a Tyler condenser. And he's like, Oh no, it's not a Tyler. It's actually a wit. And uh, you know, there's two different ones. There's a 28 and a 30. So depending on which one, you know, I can give you the part number. And like this guy, you know, you could describe what you're looking at. It's bigger than a bread box. And this son of a bitch would like be able to spout out part numbers. So what my question is, is how do you deal with, you know, trying to take a part number that you find from, you know, whether it be the Copa mobile app or whatever. I mean, a lot of times, like, you know, places like United, they'll, they'll make their own separate number for that particular part so i mean have you got anything that to help people do that with united with the copeland copeland parts it like transfers right over because every time i gave i gave them one today and like they they instantly like okay like it pops up in their system like it must be like coded the same like it must, however they do their stocks and orders it must it somehow correlates like the the that, two supplies up here like they they're been they're pretty good about it I generally don't do that in the field. I rather just find the part number myself. And if they tell me the part number is wrong, okay, well, let's, let's look at it because like, if I get a wrong part, I'm not going to be able to go back to supply house and be like, yeah, you guys screwed me. Like, yada, yada, yada. Like, this is why we lost money. Okay. Well, that's, nothing's going to happen with that. It's still my fault. It's still my job. So I always looked that stuff up myself uh, using that Copeland app or something like that. Um, condensers, for example, you're just talking about, Bone is really good about this. Okay. So like they have parts catalogs. So if you look up Google, if you're like looking up a bone condenser, like so it's like a bone BNL or whatever condenser. Okay. So you look it up, you look up bone BNL condenser, and you, you type in like parts list on Google. And they have master parts list for these condensers and evaporators. So like with bone stuff, like you could Google that and you download that parts list. So bone may have for every medium profile coil they make that for the evaporators, they'll have an entire parts book for it. Okay. So it pops up and everything's split up by models, model numbers. So you just type in there, like, so if it's a BML 130, you just type in BML 130 in the search in the Adobe after you download the document. Okay. And then it'll, it'll pop up. Okay. It'll bring you right to the page of the BML 130. You look through, you find your fan bracket, you find your fan blade, you find your shroud. Okay. You find all your part numbers in there. You write them down get them to supply house otherwise if you give the like most of the time like i don't know how i don't really go to like 
them for like bone stuff are united. I, I don't know how their system works because uh, most of the bone stuff we get from another supply house, but like they, uh, like they, they have to call every single time. They, they have to call bone and they have to get the part numbers and they have to get the prices. Well, okay. Well now I'm giving them the part number and they're giving me the prices. It's already in their system, but like they're giving me the prices. So like, that's why with like bone stuff, it's so much easier to do it that way. Look up the part number. Crack is the same way. You could look up crack parts the same way. They have a master parts catalog for crack stuff. So like I'll Google a crack like number, like if it's an LAVL, I'll Google like crack LAVL parts list. I won't type in like the, the number, like if it's like 060, whatever the condenser size is, I won't type that in. I'll just type in like the, the beginning of the model number you know, in parts list. So that way I could get, you know, the, the actual document from crack. So they're pretty good about that. Gutner, which they're, they're coming up a lot more lately. They're, you got to call them. It's, it's a pain. Their, their manuals online are few and far between, but that that's, that's quite easy to do the, like the condenser stuff like that. I see guys waste so much time trying to get uh, prices and stuff on condenser parts when you could look all that up yourself like bone has every single part in this parts catalog like i keep it on my phone like it it, it was all the way up to like uh 2015 or 2000 whatever it is it stops at like most of the older stuff like i can look up that part number immediately with it and then i noticed like they're starting to put like uh scan tags on parts too to now like condenser fans like they got a scan tag on there like okay it brings the part number right up for it Hello guys, this episode is brought to you by Fieldpiece. The tough wireless vacuum gauge MG44 from Fieldpiece is engineered to give you the reliable reading you need and the ease that you want. Confidently measure vacuums with a reliable leak-proof seal. The MG44 can be used with the JobLink system app from up to a thousand feet away. This easy to read backlit LCD offers a graphical representation of the vacuum progress even in low light or at odd angles. Visit www.fieldpiece.com for information or follow us on social media at Fieldpiece Products. Thanks again and enjoy the episode. Hey guys, today's episode is sponsored by Westermeyer Industries Serviceable Oil Floats. Many oil separators contain an oil float to effectively meter separated oil back to the compressors. Westermeyer Industries has taken this concept and perfected it. With their new line of serviceable oil floats, these floats feature an improved design with fewer components, allowing for greater manufacturer consistency and up to 20% increased oil flow versus their legacy models. These floats also feature an integrated magnet to shield the oil path from debris and have been field proven in supermarket applications. Westmeyer Industries offer replacement oil floats not only for their own separators, but also cross-compatible models for our competitor oil separators as well. You can find out more about the Westermeyer Industries serviceable oil floats by visiting westermeyerind.com backslash floats. Once again, that's westermeyerind.com slash float. Let's get on with the episode. So that that's that's how I generally research that stuff. So that way I, I already bring the part number to the vendor. That way I, they're not having to look it up. I'm not wasting their time. They're not wasting my time with a bunch of questions when I could just get that. But, I mean, most of those older supply house guys are starting to retire, it seems like. So, I mean, every once in a while you get a, you get a good couple, but. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, with everything also being on back order, like, forever. So, you know, I've had people tell me, oh, yeah, I need this valve, but it's, you know, six months out. Like, people are getting, like, stupid creative <laughs> because of, you know, the, all the all the logging of, for all the freaking parts. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know how many times in, like, the last month i've had i've been asked to well what are we going to do here because uh th this part's on back order for this what, what what can we do how can we make this work 
And it's like, okay, well, we're going to do this, this, and this. We'll try this. And if it does this, then we'll do this. Like, I mean, to me, I don't mind it because, like, I kind of like, you know, re-engineering stuff and making stuff work and making things do stuff it's not supposed to do. So, like, that, with, to me, that that's not that bad. But it does get pretty frustrating when I'm waiting for cases and uh, they keep telling me they're going to come and they don't come. And then, you know, then it's our fault that the store didn't open on time. It is your fault. Yes. Everything's always a startup guy's fault. Always. always. Uh, but like VFDs guys, like uh, they, those get tricky at times. So you got to watch like with VFDs, a lot of times you can call the manufacturer and they get pretty good tech support, but like they're not going to help you with your application. So like if it's like the E2 control in it, they're not going to be able to help you with that. Um. Nidec and Emerson, the M400 stuff, for some god awful reason, like there's like this disconnect with them, and like both neither one of the tech supports is gonna help you. So like you you pretty much gonna have to find somebody you know is good with that, like leak detection, stuff like that. Like looking up leak detector stuff. Generally, Bacharach makes everything. Like they literally make literally everything. So like whether it's Parasense, whether it's uh back rack whether it's irlds whether it's an mirlds they make fucking everything pretty much so like if i'm working on leak detectors i am definitely you know probably it's gonna go to back rack if it's an irlds or an mirlds like i am generally gonna go to back rack so like like looking that stuff up if you're looking up like an irlds manual like you, you got the emerson one but if you look up the MIRLDS one or the or the uh, HGMS 250 or whatever it is, and you look at the back rack manual, there's generally a little bit more data in there, and it's generally a little bit, little bit more specific, so it's a little bit easier. So just knowing that stuff and on how to find that. But the the moral of the story is, guys, look these manuals up before you call tech support. Look them up before you call your lead guy. Try to find that manual. Try to find that information. Try to find you know look through it, you know, and then you'll read it a little bit, you know, and take that manual. If you're working on a piece of equipment, you never worked on it before, read the manual before you work on it. If it's a case, you know, look at there, look, look and see what the, the defrost is supposed to be. Look at, see what the, you know, the, the case settings are supposed to be, the temp settings, the way the shelves are. I see so many guys miss problems of cases because the shelves are too long or too short and like, or they're in the wrong, wrong order. You know, you look at that IOM manual, it's got every, it have everything in there, the shelf lengths, the shelf setups, so like Google in that manual is like number one key. Like, or if you're working on a compressor, same thing, or like you're working on a component, Google it if you don't understand it. You know, everything's on there. This is, I mean, this is 2022. Everything is on the internet. You could pretty much find everything. And then same thing, if you're looking things up, Facebook, great search thing. So if you go into that supermarket tech talk and you start searching things, like if you search like uh, EnviroGuard rack, like there's going to be a ton of stuff that's going to pop up with the fire guard racks with like conversations or like uh, temp right oil issues or CO2 oil issues. Like there's going to be so many conversations you could dive through there. Or, you know, if you're looking up like compressor rigging, like there's so many things like I was messing around with this the other day. You could archive search things on Facebook on like certain groups. If you're in the, in those groups, you could literally archive search. Like, say if you, you know, type in, Brett's name and Dan Foss. You could, you could, li it'll literally pull up everything that Brett's talked about Dan Foss with. Or like you type my name in there and, and like a press rigging, it'll show up all these pictures of rigging stuff that I made. It's a, it's a great tool for the search on. Like if you're in these groups or like HVAC talk, if you're in or HVAC school one, you could find all these topics with stuff like that. So like using that search feature on Facebook too, like Facebook is now like, a great resource to find to find things so just so you guys are aware <clears throat> on the advanced refrigeration podcast face facebook group as well as the supermarket refrigeration tech talk one uh there is a file section um where people have put i know i've put a shit ton of documents up there and other people have too so you know utilize that for a search too i mean i know People are usually posting pictures of, you know, messed up shit they found or whatever. But, you know, utilize that for a reference as well. And, and 
man, don't be afraid to ask a question. I know guys can be some kind, you know, sometimes really relentless and, you know, they love breaking balls, but like, man, just ask the freaking question. You know, if you, if you don't, then you're not going to know. And then you're going to be stuck in the same, you know, same area that you're in now, you know, you're just you're not understanding it. So just, you know, ask it who fucking cares. Who's, who's going to comment, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, if it, somebody thinks you're stupid, who cares? They're on the, they're on the other side of the country. I mean, yeah. still get me yes. wrong. Eventually, run into some of these people because, like, I ran into some of these people, and it's like, Ngh. well, you know, Kevin's one of those guys. Who's like, I can't believe you couldn't find fucking find that stupid. That's still don't. I never put people down like that. Like, maybe some of these old boomers that are like just like commenting because there's ice on the back of the compressor and it's gonna kill everything. So you you never do except for boomers. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I've had a lot of boomers on there block me. All right, guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up for this one. Thanks for listening. Have a nice night. Later, guys.